Me and my f very good friend, uh, Janis, he's CTO, but uh, today he couldn't come, he's in the US. And um, we started uh, uh, trading, uh, doing successfully the profit. Uh, I don't know if you know, but the spreads were really, really big uh, in uh, October, November 2017. It was like um, in uh, Korea, BitHump, uh, Bitcoin was 100% uh, um, more valuable than in US, for example. So it was like 40,000 US dollars in Korea. <laughs> and um, what happened was that uh, most of the, of the exchanges, when there was the biggest hype, so in November, December, most of the exchanges uh, constantly stopped working, uh, so you couldn't access them through the web browser. I don't know if any of you experienced that. Uh, so what, what we did was, uh, because I was, I was testing all the strategies uh, with hands on my multi-screen environment, um, I, was, uh, I was unable to perform the strategy checkups, right? So uh, we came to an idea, what if we make a, a simple chatbot that would enable you to put the trades uh, through the messenger? And uh, our CTO is really, really fast, and he did it like in two days, so I was already trading via Telegram. Um, <clears throat> then came the, the January, February, and March 2018, and uh, we started to do losses. Um, but we didn't know actually why, so we, we kind of stepped back and uh, uh, tried to solve the riddle why are we doing losses, although we are doing arbitrages, right, which is a 100% profitable uh, business. Um, I'm telling this because uh, th this was the, the crucial moment in this project of PalmaBot. Um, I invited my friend and co-sailor, Gregor Bolter. He's an... Um, 55 years old guy, he was a professional broker. He was uh, uh, selling stocks, so trading stocks on the floor, you know, screaming with the uh, papers in hands. And then he survived the whole computer revolution and now the blockchain revolution. So he's like, a, I don't know, the biggest uh, uh, um, sack of knowledge about finance and exchange and trading and everything. So. He actually brought this knowledge to the team that enlightened us. And uh, then we started to do the right things. So in a direction that uh, truly uh, uh, provided us with profitable moves. But this is something I don't want to talk about today. The thing here is, uh, uh, first thing, so I want to stress out here is the ownership. Not just of the data, but ownership in general, because this is the crucial thing that make, made us profitable. Um, most, of the, most of the people that I meet and that are trading so that they possess uh, some kind of cryptocurrency, uh, they take it for granted. And this is one step that happened inevitably with the crypto world. So uh, back in the old days, you couldn't just buy a stock. Even nowadays, you can't buy a stock. You have to do it through the brokerage house. I don't know if you're, if you're aware of that. Even if you're trading Forex, this is actually their IT solution licensed, and you are actually buying that through their uh, brokerage house. Whereas in the crypto world, as you all know, it's uh, people's technology, as we say. Um, so people can buy cryptocurrencies which are from the point of view of uh, ownership, are actually the same as stocks or any other asset that you can own. So from this perspective, um, I, I would say, for example, real estate. Do, does anybody own a real estate here? No, but uh, you can't just you know, buy a real estate and then go for 10 years somewhere, and then you come back and you expect to, to profit from it, right? You have to take care of it. 
You have to answer your emails, your phone all the time because somebody is running that building or you're a co-owner of the building. It's, it's constant uh, um, uh, um, obligatory that you have to uh, uh, be there for. And it is the same with cryptocurrencies. Okay? So now we said, as Gregor came, me, me and Yannis, we were having like this chatbot that you can trade really fast with, and uh, we actually didn't know what to do with it. But then when Gregor joined, he, uh, he, he made us realize what a valuable thing we did. With this in mind, that you have to take care of whatever you are owning. And then, it's like uh, uh, trading from, the, from another perspective is like a race. You know, you probably heard that 90% of people are losing money. Why do you think is, is so? Because of emotions. One thing is emotions. And they don't know about setups, and they don't know how to read charts. Exactly. And another thing is they don't have the right tools. Either the tools are too slow, or the tools don't work, as was in my case when my web browser didn't show me anything when I wanted to access Bitstamp, for, for example. So, uh, like, what I'd like to uh, stress out here or point out is that it's like uh, if you don't prepare really good when you start trading, it's like you'd be going on a car race with, uh, with the Zasta 101. You probably all know it, right? and somebody else comes with a Ferrari, you don't stand a chance, right? So, and all these things actually are up to you to decide whether you're gonna use the fastest tool that you can get, whether you're gonna use the, 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 the most of the knowledge that you can get nowadays online. It's, everything is up to you. You just have to be aware of it. But most of people aren't. And of course, the slowest animal is always eaten by an attacker. It's a natural law, right? So we came to the point where we say, okay, we can now, we have a great solution. It's fast. We have a knowledge that we want to spread among the people and learn them that uh, how can they be better with uh, ownership, okay? Let's put it this way in more general perspective. So we said, okay, now we have to give this to a user and the user is in average not aware of the security. And we wanted to do the product that is really privacy aware. Okay, so we, we said, damn it, uh, uh, if we keep the API keys of our users on our servers, that is not going to be okay. We have an empty Gox, uh, we have a nice hash that was hacked, those were all the giants that had a lot of money uh, uh, in their, uh, let's say, um, uh, in their system, or going through their system, maybe better to say. And they had the API keys centralized, uh, so stored on their servers. And this is, of course, a very, very nice point for the hacker to attack. So if, if I see from a perspective of hacker, I would say, uh, whom will I attack? Whom, where will I lose my time and energy where the most of the money is and everything is central and if I break in, I will access everything, right? So we said, okay, on one side, we don't, we don't want API keys to have them on our servers and at the same time, so this was actually the, the job of our CTO, Yanis, and I had the job of being compliant with GDPR. And uh, when we met with those two ideas, we said, let's put the API keys onto the device of the user. And this is something that killed two mosquitoes at once. So it's like, if we don't possess, possess any data of the user, we don't have to bother with GDPR, right? And if uh, we, don't, uh, we don't have the API keys, so if somebody breaks into our server, which is very well secured, but still, nothing is 100% secure. This is something we, we, we share very strongly. So 
if the hacker doesn't have nothing there at our servers to attack, he won't attack it. And um, how we manage to do that is uh, maybe the debate for some other part of the event, so more technological, and I'm not entitled to talk about the technology that we used, but mainly it's uh, we, we, we grab process uh, uh, data, so order books from more than uh, 100 exchanges. Now we have uh, more than 30 exchanges tested and running, but we, we connected already more than 100, but not tested yet. And we have, I think, around 200 coins now uh, uh, tested and running, and more than 1,000 uh, are coming. And uh, yeah, so I would actually like to, to tell you another story. Um, did you hear about the first cup ever in sports? It's called, uh, back in the days, it was in 18th century, it was called um, 100 Guinness Cup. Have you heard about it? It's, it was the regatta, the sailing regatta. Um, it's now America's Cup. And because of that first cup, it's now called America's Cup because uh, the American sailing boat came, uh, Schooner America, and it defeated 10 uh, uh, boats of the uh, United Kingdom sailing army. And uh, <clears throat> at the end of the race, the, the, the queen uh, asked, uh, uh, but uh, who is the second? And uh, uh, they answered, uh, there is no second, your majesty. There is only one winner. There is no second. So with this, I want to stress out how important it is that you are really good prepared. Um, if you are building solutions, uh, I think this is the only right way to go, so don't, to, to not possess the, the data central on their servers. And um, with this, actually, you get rid of many, many bugging, uh, um, so to speak, legislations, so GDPR and so on. And besides that, um, maybe if you talk about uh, GDPR as well, for me, GDPR, I don't know what you think about it, but for me, it's like just uh, another system that enables governments to get some of the money that Google and Facebook are getting. Would you agree? Not agree? Well, what happened now is that Google has to pay, I don't know how many millions to, the, to Europe because of the, uh, breaking the GDPR. But actually, my personal data is still in hands of Google and Facebook. I cannot, I cannot do anything with this data. I cannot go to Google and say, forget about me. From now on, you cannot uh, uh, know anything about me. It's, it's impossible, right? So I think this is really important that we should be activists. Uh, and this is something that we are doing together with Fair Data Society from Slovenia, if somebody heard about. Uh, Gregor Jautzer, a friend of mine, is running it. And um, we are uh, pushing now forward this term that we want to standardize. It's called zero data apps. Um, with this in mind, I would like to let you make a question. If not, we can go for a pause for a coffee. Thank you.